Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're addressing the various parables of Jesus which are contained in the Gospels, and this week, the parable of the prodigal son, found in the Gospel of Luke. This is a pretty long, well-known parable, so let's take a look. And he said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of substance that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his substance. And not many days after, the younger son, gathering all together, went abroad into a far country, and there wasted his substance, living riotously. Luke 15, to 13 we later learn that while the boy's father gave him his inheritance, he didn't give the other half to his other son at this point. In any case, this is a young man who wanted to live a life of luxury while he was still young, and actually got the chance to do so through the leniency of his father. There are too many people today who follow the same kind of path. And after he had spent all, there came a mighty famine in that country, and he began to be in want. Luke fifteen fourteen. The son didn't plan for his future didn't save money or make any wise investments or purchase anything valuable for a rainy day. In short, he had money, but because he'd never earned it, he had no respect for it, and people who don't take their money seriously soon lose it all. And he went and cleaved to one of the citizens of that country, and he sent him into his farm to feed swine. Luke 15.15 15. He hung around a more responsible citizen trying to survive, and ended up stuck in the most degrading and humiliating of dead-end jobs, a job taking care of animals that were even considered unclean, unfit to use for food, by the Jews. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husks the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. Luke 15.16 He was still hungry and destitute, and he realized how valuable his father's help had been when no one else offered to help him at all. And returning to himself, he said, How many hired servants in my father's house abound with bread, and I here perish with hunger? Luke fifteen seventeen. He realized that even working as a servant in the house of a rich man like his father is better than working for some stranger who doesn't care whether you live or die, and is finally faced with the harsh reality of weighing the value of two options, and choosing the one that seems to offer the better prospects, an important skill when it comes to taking responsibility. I will arise and go to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. I am not worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. Luke fifteen eighteen to 19 He formulates a whole apology speech and prepares to plead with him for a position as a servant in his house because he thinks that his dad will never be able to forgive him for wasting half his property on unwise luxuries. And rising up, he came to his father, and when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and was moved with compassion, and running to him, fell upon his neck and kissed him. Luke fifteen twenty. It was common for male relatives to kiss each other in older cultures, and nobody thought it was weird. It's less common today, though it still does happen in certain cultures. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. I am not now worthy to be called thy son. And the father said to his servants, Bring forth quickly the first robe, and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet. Luke fifteen twenty one to 22 The ring and shoes are much finer clothes than he'd been wearing, and the shoes are probably better than the footwear worn by the servants. The term first robe implies the best robe in the house, a sign that his father is honoring him. And bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat, and make merry. Luke 15.23 People who keep animals for food will sometimes keep one that's fatter than the others for special purposes. At least that's the case here. Because this my son was dead, and has come to life again, was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Luke 15.24 The father is just happy that his son has come home in a penitent mood. Now his elder son was in the field. And when he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing, and he called one of the servants, and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe. Luke fifteen twenty-five to 27 The other brother, meanwhile, the more frugal one, has been working hard this whole time, and has just found out what's been going on. He was angry, and would not go in. 
His father, therefore, coming out, began to entreat him. But he answering, said to his father, Behold, for so many years do I serve thee, and I have never transgressed thy commandment, and yet thou hast never given me a kid to make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son is come, who hath devoured his substance with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. Luke fifteen twenty eight to 30 The careful son is angry that his wasteful brother is being given even more lavish treatment after having been allowed to do so much damage already. And also he's jealous that his brother has gotten so much for himself and he hasn't. These verses make a point of drawing attention to that, that the frugal son draws a comparison between himself and his brother in terms of what their father has done for them. Now, here's where I think many people interpret this parable badly. They come down hard on the frugal son for being bitter, as though all his years of hard work for his father meant nothing. I've even heard lots of people say that he wasn't such a good son after all because he wasn't quite so ready to get over what his brother did. However, this next verse blows that interpretation away. But he said to him, Son, thou art always with me, and all I have is thine. Luke fifteen thirty one. The father doesn't deny that his other son has done the right thing in the past and promises that he will receive his reward, the remainder of the inheritance, while the wasteful brother will probably always be dependent on his other family members to support him. However, just because you're a good person and are doing what's right doesn't mean your judgments are always perfect, because the father then says, But it was fit that we should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and is found. Luke 15.32 When a sinner repents of his sin and accepts the gifts of God, that's always something to celebrate, no matter what. While feeling some discontent over others being treated too leniently as normal, the salvation of souls comes first. Remember, what should really matter to us isn't the inheritance that others get. It's the inheritance that we get from God in heaven. If we can still get that inheritance, we shouldn't begrudge others their happiness, even if they may not have worked as hard or done as much. That's what I take away from this parable. Next, the Good Samaritan. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.